My grandmother, she used to be a seamstress, and being a seamstress, she being a seamstress, I was very attracted to what she was doing. Fashion is one thing, you know, pageantry is another thing. You must not mix them. 1989, I got to Paris at that time, and I was living right there under the Eiffel Tower. My sexuality, which was a little bit imposed on me, actually, in Saint Lucia, because I didn't say I was gay to anyone. I think my, my face is my passport now, and I'm so unique. In, oh, I'm so unique in my kind, you know. So, but anyhow, totally for the agree, record, but for the record, for the record, I'll say <laughs> my name is Vincent McDoom. You know, yes. I'm from Saint Lucia. Obviously, I was born in Sofia. I was brought up in Canaries, but uh, now I live in Paris. And uh, what do I do? You know, I'm an artist. I rather um, say uh, use that word because it englobes a lot of what I. Um, what I like and what I like to do you know so I uh, started off as a fashion designer now I'm a fashion consultant wow. I am now a TV presenter an actor as well and also a project conceptor for television so and also a model trainer right so, so you know that. multifaceted all the way and uh, I would like just go back a little bit and tell us like when you left St. Lucia and where did oh you God. St how did you start? What did you actually leave St. Lucia to do? And then what did you end up doing? When you're a child, you know, you say to your parents in St. Lucia, you'd like to be an artist, you know, and your parents look at you and they said, you know, an artist don't pay, you yes. know, singing don't pay, modeling don't pay, you know, they would advise you to do other things like probably you become a mason or you go and you study law or you do things like that. That is tangible. That brings yes. in money. But if you say you want to be a photographer or you want to be a model or you want, they would tell you, no, it's no, not our culture, good, you know, yeah. but I always wanted to be a fashion designer because my grandmother, she used to be a seamstress and being a seamstress, she being a seamstress, I was very attracted to what she was doing. A simple anecdote, you know, that when I was five, my grandmother had a friend of hers living in Castries and she, that lady, her name was Miss Steve, in fact. And my grandmother, every weekend when she came up to Castries from Canaries, she would take one of us Okay. two castries with her but then that day she had to go and see her friend okay. and uh, when i went with her to this woman's place who was a designer at the time you know i entered and i was like surprised i was you know i knew that's what i wanted what to, to do, do you know okay. because it was colorful yeah. it was uh it was creative right. and not only was it all of that but i did not know the title you know yes. of uh, that um that, uh, profession. that profession. Yeah. So, you know, I just knew that that's, that's what, what I wanted to do. Wanted but you to. know, around Christmas time, the family comes together mm -hmm. and everybody around the table with the kids and everybody's tend to ask the children, what would you like to do when yeah. you get older? <laughs> you know, so me, everybody, I was waiting for my turn. <laughs> my brother wanted to be a mechanic. My cousin wanted to be a doctor and everything like that. So I was so happy when it was my turn, I blurted out Miss Steve. You know, Steve. yeah, I wanted to be Miss Steve because, and my my family did not associate Miss Steve with the job she was doing. They thought that I wanted to be a woman, so that means I wanted to I wanted to be gay. You know yes. what I mean? And in the in the society that we uh, we live in, you know, it was not seen as something properly Pro okay. proper. Yes. You know, so I got the slap of the day. You know, yeah. I just. <laughs> Just took it in, you know, but that did not deter me from what I really wanted to do. So I went to school, I did everything I had to do. And at a certain age, I decided, okay, that's, uh, I really want to go into designing. And I started modeling with Tina Rubenstein here. Yes. I started um, working with some girls, you know, in the Carnival Queen department. Oh, yes. But then at a very young age, I realized it was two different things. You know, if the fashion is one thing, you know, pageantry is another thing. Pageantry, you must not mix them. Right. And these are two jobs, you know what I mean? Yes, yes. And then I also realized, you know, that um, working, you know, in the creative field, you know, it was not a hobby like we tend to believe it is in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. It is a multi-million dollar yeah, making industry. business, yes. you know what I mean? And we have not understood this, yeah. you know, so I decided I wanted to be a fashion designer, but to get out of St. Lucia to do a fashion, fashion designing, I did not have the money. I did not come from 
are very rich families, so yeah. there was no nepotism going on, you know what I mean? So I just had to bide my turn, right. you know. <laughs> so what I did was I accepted a scholarship by the Kellogg's Foundation. I went right. to the States. I did right. business administration and accounts, which is my real job, guys, you know. And many really you need it anyway <laughs> in everything that you do. So it's a very I good I think foundation. so too, you know. Yes. So then I came back to St. Lucia and lo and behold, I... Uh, I was working with a friend of mine called Lynn Bristol, mm -hmm. and with Adrian Oje and herself, we decided to start a company called Gen S. That's right. And Adrian Oje was supposed to be pumping money into it. Lynn was going to do creative, um, how do you call it, um, designs, designs on the yes. on white fabric, yes. and I was to sew it up. You know what right. I mean? And Lynn came up to me one day and she told me, "Oh, for the tenth anniversary Independence of Saint Lucia." There would be um, a huge modeling and uh, fashion event mm -hmm. at the cultural complex and it was sponsored by the French embassy mm -hmm. and the, the, the French cultural system plus St. Lucia okay. and she asked me if we could enter as an entity as Jeunesse, right. you know, so I said, yeah, why not, you know, right. so Jeunesse was entering this uh, fashion designer show, Great but you know, Jeunesse was not at all what it was not me you yes, know Janice yes. I was working with friends yes, yes. you know and I was working with friends to help them mm -hmm. you know but it was not me it was me Lynn and Adrian right. Oje so what I did was that because I had friends of mine like um, Susie Lubin like uh, yes. Miss Joan Johnson like Krista Mogul you know a lot mm -hmm. of these girls I used to sew for them um, Debbie Lang I used yes. to sew for these girls mm -hmm. so what I did was that I said okay I'll enter as a separate entity, but I did not say to Janice that I was <laughs> entering the competition. And what I did was that I collected all of the dresses that I had made for these girls okay. who were models at the time, you oh, know. Okay. And I entered the show with it. And lo and behold, what happened? After the show, uh, Janice won six major prizes mm -hmm. and the coveted prize, you know, the coveted prize yes, yeah. was the designer of, the, of, the, of, the, of that event. Mm -hmm. I won it. Wow. And then Mr. Gilles Marek, who was the cultural attaché to the French embassy at the time, he came up on the runway and he said, we would be sending Mr. McDoom over to France for a couple wow. of months, you know, to work with a fashion designer. And everybody knew that fashion designer. His name was Mr. Yves Saint Laurent. And my, wow. and my dream at that time was, you know, to be the black Yves Saint Laurent because there were not oh. really well-known black, black designers, designers at the time. True. You that's know, true. the only designer at the time that was a black designer doing very well was Patrick Kelly, who died a couple of years later mm -hmm. when I got to France. You oh, know? Okay. So that's how I ended up leaving St. Lucia and going to France. So that goes to show, um, Vincent, that we should never give up on our dreams. Never. Because That's something I'm and, living proof and, of that. And yeah, because even you were in St. Lucia at a young age, who would have thought that your design would win a contest that would send you to France to work with the designer of your dreams? Well definitely so, not me, because yeah. you know, I used to I used to work part time at a bookshop called Sunshine Bookshop. Yes, yeah, still I, there. Bless Rona <laughs> for being there for me because I looked for a job when I came back from the States and I went, you know, to many different places to try to banks and because I had the qualifications to work at banks. But I once went to a bank and I gave my uh, resume and everything and the lady looked at me and she said, I would not be caught dead giving a boy like you a job in this business. You know what I mean? Oh. So then I felt, you know, that I should really go back to what I like best. Mm -hmm. So I went into Sunshine Bookshop mm -hmm. and I was crying and I was looking at a Vogue, you know, and Rona mm -hmm. Pilgrim walked in and Rona, she was a little bit upset when she walked in and she said, what is he doing there? He's always there. Is he buying the magazine? <laughs> you know, and at the time her cashier, Barbara, you know, was working there and Barbara said, you know, he's into designs and he cannot buy the magazines. He comes and checks it yes. out. <laughs> and whatnot, and Rona said, "Well, if he can read the magazine, then give him a job. Let him let him read, but then at least he's working." And I started oh, working there wow. as an accountant. Bless her heart. Yes. Thank you, Rona. And that's how I started working there. Amazing. You know, and it all bubbled from there. Yes, you know, so yes. I'm, I can say thank you to a lot of people. people you know, yes. and Rona is one of these one people. Of you know what I mean? Great. So you you get to France, and then you are supposed to be there just for a few weeks, right? I was supposed to be there for six months. For six months? That's yes. a pretty long time. And then in that six months, knowing you, you just blossomed from there. What did you do? 
getting to France was my dream, you know, yes. and my dream, I saw it when I was a little boy on a, on a, uh, on a Mills and Boons cover, <laughs> you know, it was very funny. Everybody around me was reading Mills and Boons, which is yes, very, very funny, you know what I mean? <laughs> and people used to just gobble Mills and Boons. But I was a little child and I saw the cover of the Mills and Boons. On the cover of the Mills and Boons was this very good looking man with his hair blowing in the wind, mm -hmm. dark and a beautiful girl in his arms. Mm -hmm. But right behind them, the backdrop was this monument. And I felt this monument was really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, this monument, I would love to leave wherever this monument <laughs> was, was, you know, because this monument, monument, it was a mixture of femininity. It was a mixture of masculinity. And I said, oh my God, I associated who I was with that monument. monument. And I said, that's the only place I could leave my dream. And it just happened to be in Paris. And that monument happened to be the Eiffel Tower. Oh, you know what I, I mean? Totally because you. it was very phallic. Yeah. You know, yes, the way it was, it was straight up, you know, and very phallic. But at the same time, it was dressed in this fabulous <laughs> dress, you know, yeah. with lace. But it was a metal lace dress. Right. And I decided, you know, I really wanted to be there. So I got to Paris on the 15th of April, 1988. Wow. No, 1989. Mm -hmm. I got to Paris at that time. And I was living right there under the Eiffel Tower. So it really? was my dream, you wow. know what I mean? And I was like going, okay, so if I'm here, I'm going to make it here, That's you know? Right. And I said, the next time I go back to St. Lucia, I would love very much for people to unroll the red carpet for me. Because yes. I knew I was going to make it. But at the time, you know, Yves Saint Laurent, he had already had the amount of trainees he needed. So mm -hmm. I had to go to Paco Rabanne, who's oh, one of the one of the biggest the fashion biggest, designers, the metal king, we call yes. him, you know, <laughs> in Paris. And everybody who has not worn a perfume by, by, by Paco Rabanne, That's you know right. what I mean? And he, had, he was one of the designers who had marked, you know, the 60s mm -hmm. with his Barbarella, because he did dresses for Barbarella. Mm -hmm. I was lucky and I walked in. I remember the first day I walked into work. There's a very famous model called Sonia Cole. Mm -hmm. And when I walked in, he looked at me and he came up to me and he told me, you know, Sonia, we do not have time for the fittings today. You will have to come next week. And I didn't pay attention to what he was saying because he was speaking to me in English with his French accent, but I was, it was not like me. And the lady came, uh, one of his assistants came up to me and she said, but you're not Sonia Cole. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm Vincent. I think he had me mistaken for somebody. Yeah. And then she explained to me it was one of his models, oh. you know, that he had mistaken me with. Oh. And, uh, you know, then she told him that I was there to train with him. Okay. And then he came up to me and he said, he, he presented himself and he said to me something that I would never forget, you what know. He said to me, you know, if you decide that you want to work in the creative business, you know, Art does not have a sex on it, you know. Like if you wants to, if you wants to work in the art, you have to learn to disassociate, disassociate sexuality with art because sex yeah. art does not have a sexuality, sexuality. on it. He yeah, says that if you put a sexuality on art, you would not appreciate it. He said yeah. because if a pair of shoes is beautiful, you do not care if it's a woman or it's if it's feminine it's or masculine. masculine. You want to have it, you will get it. That's you do not right. care if you know this table, you know it's feminine or masculine. That's you want right. to have it. You do not care if this pair of trousers is masculine or feminine. You want it, you have it. That's and true. that's the way you have to see life, or that's your perspective on art uh -huh. if you want to make it. You know, and that stayed with me. I worked with my, I worked with him for um, what the six months. Yeah. And after the six months, I, wa I really wanted to stay in Paris. Mm -hmm. But what I did was that I didn't have the financial stability mm -hmm. or a me the means to stay there because yeah. living in Paris is quite expensive. expensive. So what I did was that I came back to St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. And when I came back to St. Lucia, I went to see uh, Mr. Marek, who was the attaché. And he said to me, but why did you come back? And I said, well, I could not stay there. He said, I'm sending you right back. So what he did was that he asked Paco Rabanne for um, uh, a resume of my work. Right. And Paco sent him a letter. That letter, he had it at the French embassy. Mm -hmm. And the French embassy sent, you know, a note to Mr. Romanus Lansico, who was really good to me yes. at the time. And Jake Scampton, who was also yes. the Minister of Culture at the time. That's and the right. two of them were like fathers to me. So then they were saying, okay, they understood what art was all about mm -hmm. and they said okay we're getting you out of here they gave me another visa with the help of 
the French, French government, embassy. and this time they sent me over to study. So oh. I left Saint Lucia this time, and I went to study. So I went back to France. France. Three months later, mm -hmm. I went back to France, but this time with the first ever scholarship in France to study fashion. Wow. I studied fashion at one of the biggest French fashion colleges called Esmod in Paris. Mm -hmm. I left the school, and when I left fashion at Esmod, I started working right away at the house of Guy Roche. When you, you know, yeah. I started working with yes. Angelo Talazzi. Wow. I worked with another young designer called Andre Walker, mm -hmm. and somebody would change my life forever is when I met him and I remember seeing one of his dresses on the cover of Vogue because he was a young designer working for Perry Ellis at the time was Marc Jacobs. Yes. Then I yes. met Marc Jacobs and when I met Marc Jacobs I became the assistant to Marc Jacobs at Louis Vuitton at Vuitton. the time. Yes. And 